Yes guys, what's going on and welcome back to the channel and your Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. This is one of the most exciting times on the channel with this career mode. Ten games in, we are in third place, but come the end of the season, that would be a big disappointment. We need to win the league title, we need to get up to the championship automatically. The board are damn tough. They have not set us any kind of wiggle room with expectations. We have to do very well domestically and we have to do very well financially as well. Not been given lots of money for players so we've had to work with what we've got, the Youth Academy and also bring in some very young, very high potential players which you guys suggested. So fingers crossed they continue to play well and continue to improve as we head in now to the first game of the episode against a team that will be hoping for promotion as well. This team will be hoping to get back to the Premier League as soon as possible. Portsmouth, they won the FA Cup not that long ago. They were a really good Premier League side not that long ago. Things have changed though since then for both teams. Sunderland and Portsmouth, you could say, are sleeping giants down in League One. Well, it's time to wake up. It's time to get ready. It is time for a massive game. Here comes kickoff. Early on, we realised that Longball FC was a bit of Portsmouth, but we realised they were open at the back. Through ball into Edwards. This is the second coming of Gareth Bale, the tricky winger from Wales, from our youth academy. We have found a new version of Gareth Bale, and this guy is going to the very top. Beautiful finish. I cannot wait to see how good he can become. He is looking real, real good. Eyes from all around the footballing world are already watching Edwards of Sunderland. Unfortunately though, boys, our leads are not lasting long enough at the minute, but this is something we couldn't really stop. What a strike that is. Walker up front for Portsmouth today has hit an absolute screamer. Yes, we are going 1-0 up, but we are not holding on to our leads for very long, and that is an issue. But something like that cannot be stopped. That is just a bit of pure footballing quality. Footballing joy for the neutrals and the home fans. Touch. Boom! What a super strike that is from Walker. And that brings us back level. Back at one each. This game hangs in the balance. What team can capitalise and take home the win? And that wasn't all to happen in the way of goal math action in the first half. Stewart picks up a loose ball, slides it in to Dan Nil! In from central midfield, makes a deep run. Frank Lampard-esque, you might say. He arrives in the box and he finishes absolutely lethal from Dan Neal and that gives us our lead back that is 2-1 and still we're not done here in this first half Stewart this time on the ball 32 minutes on the clock and counting exposing the back line of Portsmouth again it is Lyndon Gooch he scores yet again. He's having a really decent start to the season. And long may it continue as we now have a two-goal cushion. We now have a 3-1 lead. And now we recommence here in the second half. Portsmouth not giving up on this. And I have to say, 3-2 is a dangerous scoreline, especially when you are the home team. And looking back on this goal, I cannot cannot avoid the questions over my goalkeeper this time boys I just can't it is terrible he's a young man in goal from the youth academy from wows as well Collins he's got to do better there he's got to do so much better hopefully throughout this season we can see him improving goal but there he's gone down far far too early but thankfully that is how it ended we hung on for three points a 3-2 win to start today's episode and now we jump in to the next game, which is in the EFL Trophy competition. We're not aiming to win, but if we win it, we will take it. And we do take a 3-0 win today over Forest Green. A really nice result. Heading into now the next game, this one. At home, our fans starting to build a real relationship with our players. This one against Oxford in the league. 
A false start is a must in this kind of game. To get the fans on side, a false start is what we get! A beautiful hit there from Rida. We signed him from Young Boys, and he is bought into this project, and he is bought in to this team. He is fantastic in the midfield. I wonder how good this boy is going to get, because each episode, he improves. Rida on the ball there, into our Youth Academy style, Riley. Stewart takes a touch out of his feet. Out wide again, onto Lyndon Gooch, bearing down on that back line. Lyndon Gooch still pulls it back. Youth Academy store boy, our captain, Riley, gets the goal. The number seven cannot stop scoring for this club at the minute. And that is how it ends. A dominant display, a fantastic display. The fans love this team at the minute, and I love it as well. Do you? Let me know in the comments, guys, as we come away from this one with a really nice win. Smash that like button if you're enjoying this career mode so far, and subscribe if you're new. A 2-0 win. Thank you very much. We have lots of fixtures to get through this season, so another game here for you to get through. And we have Gillingham, and this ends up in a 1-1 draw. Defoe on the score sheet. Too many draws so far this season. We need to turn them draws into wins if we want the top two places. Next game then against Crew Alexandra. And we go there and we take all three points today. A 2-1 win. Defoe and Huggins scoring. The right back comes in and scores himself a beautiful goal in the 90th minute to win us all three points. And Youth Academy players again. Callum Pickering being signed up from England. Looks like a decent little find. And now another game. This one up against Charlton. At home, the Stadium of Lights brings us another win. Winchester, Riley getting themselves on the score sheet. And Riley gets another. So he got two more goals today. What a player he is turning into, boys. And we're looking at the league table now. Five games passed already in this episode. We have nine wins, 31 points. We are second behind only one team in Rotherham United. They're having a standout season so far. Really looking like a solid side. That is going to be an almighty battle at the top. But we have to keep our noses clear. We have to keep our eyes open. Because we can see there's plenty of teams just below us. Ready to take advantage. And we go into this one then against Rotherham. With it all to play for. If we win it, we go top. If they win it, they extend their gap at the top. How is this going to play out, boys? How is this going to play out? I'm going to give it everything. The players are ready. The team talk is done. Let your talking now happen on the pitch and here we go then guys about 40 minutes played approaching half time Riley ball over the top into a shoot this is the man of the moment this is the striker of league one football he will not stop scoring but the through ball the dink over the back line by Riley shows how good that this youth academy boy is this guy is 16 years of age playing through balls like that and Stuart finishing them off Surely, surely we are heading for season one promotion. Surely. And now here we are, 47th minute early in the second half. Riley out wide to Lyndon Gooch. He goes into Riley again, dinks it again to Stewart. Them two building up a real partnership now. And we are sinking that ship of Rotherham United. They were flying high up until today. And we have brought them Right back down to earth. Sunderland Football Club take advantage today. They take a 2-0 lead. Surely this game is going to end in all glory for Sunderland. 52nd minute now. Rotherham free kick. Cannot switch off here. It is dinked into the box. And it is flicked in. Oh my god. We have ourselves a game once again. Rotherham 1. Sunderland 2. They're back in this boys. They're back in this. Right, we need to refocus, regroup, set back up, keep solid, and hopefully hit them on the counter. We cannot afford to drop points here. We need to win this game. Being 2-0 up, losing out, or getting only a draw would be a massive disappointment and would only help Rotherham with their confidence. Into the 88th, they were pushing, and I was starting to get a little bit concerned. We left ourselves wide open at the back. They're bursting in, and it's a bit of defending to be done by Doyle just into additional time. 
We just got away with that. But we don't. We throw it straight to them. Mitchell Gula can't get it away. Yeah. That just happened. We have thrown it all the way. And you have to look at the goalkeeper again. Why is he throwing it out there in such a rush? The defending is pretty poor, to be fair. Mitroglou at the back. Doyle, the young man at the back. We surrender. A 2-0 lead. It is now 2-2. And just seconds on the clock, we sense that we have dropped a massive, massive opportunity here. A massive one. It's a really nice finish. But then again, when I watch it back, the goalie, he goes down so early. It's another error. What is he going down like that for? Shocker. Absolute shicky shacky shit shocker. What has he done? What has he done? And there goes the full-time whistle. The referee brings a halt to proceedings today. We have thrown it away, boys. 2-0 up. It ends two each against the league leaders. We have found another Youth Academy goalkeeper that we will be watching for sure. Michael Bryce, age of 15, looks pretty decent. But we'll keep watch of him. But we need to improve the first team right away. We need Burge or we need Collins to step up in goal for sure between now and we can get another goalie. The FL Trophy ends in a 1-1 draw against Cheltenham. Broadhead hasn't got much game time so far this season, but he did get a goal to ensure we're still in the competition for now and then into the next game which is at home against Lincoln in the league another draw this time 2-2 two, two. Broadhead got another goal so back to back games for him so a little bit of form he is coming into and now we look at the league table then 17 games played already we're crushing it here at 33 points if we could have turned some of those draws into wins we could be running away with the league title already this season but we're not and today it is second versus third we cannot afford to bottle this game. We are the league's leading scorers. We want to be the league's leaders. We need to get to the top of the pile. And we've got to do it by beating teams like this today. Ipswich, one of the best defensive teams in the league. Against one of the best scoring teams in the league. What an almighty clash we have here at the Steam of Light. The place where football is starting to burn bright again. Here we go. Big, big game. And so we join the action here early in this half. And this is Ipswich corner. Ball in the box, headed away. But back here with Ipswich. Can we get the ball? We do. Reader reads it really well. Into Riley. What a beautiful turn by Riley. Edwards, the Gareth Bale of our generation. In towards Stewart, the league's leading scorer. He scores again. Number 14, Stewart is the best striker in this division. Tell me otherwise. I think not. What a finish. Lots of pressure on his shoulders this season. Jermaine Defoe, yes, he's a clinical finisher. But he's going to only be used sparingly off the bench because his issues with his stamina and his fitness it is really proving to be a difficult task to manage his game time. So Stewart, he is key to this season. But Ipswich not giving up on this game, not by any stretch. Having a really good go at things, but we are so good on the counter-attack. And here we go again. Riley puts it through to Stewart. You know how this is going to end up. It's going to be... Oh, what a save that is. We could really do with a goalkeeper making saves like that up our end. What a bloody save. That denies us a 2-0 lead. Keeps it right in the balance here in this massive clash. Bit of defence to be done again. Winchester wins it back. Gooch. A little 1-2 maybe on with Riley. It is. It's really good football here. We're starting to build up really good patterns of play as Gooch sees Edwards arriving. I am telling you now. I've told you already, but I'll tell you again. This is the second coming of Gareth Bale. This is the next Welsh winger who's going to tear it up here in England. And he could end up at Real Madrid. I'm not even joking you. This guy is the real deal. And that's a beautiful finish. Look at that. Not often you see the quality of Edwards down in League One. That is a fabulous volley. Well, it's half volley, really. But the keeper, either way, had no chance of saving that power. Accuracy. And quality. 
now the clock is ticking. We're approaching half time, but we smell opportunity. Opportunity to kill this match! And surely that has done it. Surely that tap home from Riley. Another goal for him. Our number seven, our captain. Surely has written this one into the record books as a home win. Now we did absolutely bottle it earlier in this episode against Rotherham. We cannot do that again. We've done it against number one in the league. We cannot do it against the team that are sandwiching us in third. We need to continue and we need to maybe add a few more goals to really show we mean business. Guys, stick with this team. It is going to grow and it's going to become a juggernaut of English football into the second half. Ipswich doing everything they can to maybe get back in the game. Poor defending allows them to do just that yet again. The defending, there's no marking. So much time on the ball. And there you go. That's what you get. A Luko scores for Ipswich. I mean, it needs to calm down a little bit, mate. You are 3-1 down. You need to take a chill, you know? Take a chill. Lot to come still in this game. We're pissing about a bit, though. Yet again at the back. And you know what's happening. You know what's going to happen. Given away. Given away. Surely we're not going to give away this result. Surely not. 3-2. They're back in it. They are back in it. And there's 10 minutes to play. And in 10 minutes, a lot can happen. What will happen, though, at the end of this game? Will we be celebrating or will we be annoyed? 88th. Bit of space. Been fouled on the halfway line. We're battling away for it. Another foul. And that is a red card. Bye. Bye, Ipswich. They go down to 10 men. And surely they throw away any final opportunities of getting something from this game. He made I mean he made a double swoop. It was pretty much a second yellow and red. A double yellow red if you will, but he got the straight and he's off and we're off down the tunnel for the full time result today. A 3-2 win. My god, we needed it. And already boys, 18 games have gone just like that. 36 points on the board could be even more if we could turn some of them draws into wins. I'm sure we'll do that later in the season, but we're well even touching distance of the top. Lang is the top goal scorer at the minute of 10 goals. Stewart just behind him with nine. He's definitely in with a shout for this year's golden boot. He's a really clinical finisher, man. I guarantee you he's going to get it. And he's also top for assists. Linden Gooch just behind him. So we're occupying a lot of spots with goal scoring. But when you look and see at defending and clean sheets, we are nowhere to be seen. We have not kept enough clean sheets. We must really improve upon that. It's just not been good enough. But now the player of the episode up by a six overall already. 70 rated Scott Edwards. The next Gareth Bale. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new. You take it easy. Until next time, peace.